everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Q-Tips. We are the Video Store Junkies, and we are back to bring you a few movies or TV shows to watch over the weekend on streaming. And we're going to kick this off, and I will pass it over to Bill. Well, thank you. One of the more interesting characters in exploitation movies was Russ Meyer, who was a uh, army uh, photographer, learned how to w work under pressure with like, you know, when Nazis are shooting at you and stuff and how to keep the camera in focus. And uh, was a man who knew what he liked and what he liked were breaths as, <laughs> as, as large as possible, preferably two at a time, but you know, whatever <laughs> he really, and, and he made a bunch of soft core adult films that sort of combined action adventure, rough, you know, He-Man stuff and everything. And as, and they were really well made rated X, although they would play on everything tougher than Nickelodeon right now. <laughs> and probably his most popular one, the one that I think has really stood the test of time is the amazingly titled from 1965, faster pussycat kill kill, which just sounds like something the Japanese would make up. But that was, that was it. It stars Tura Santana, who was the quintessential Russ Meyer Amazon. She's she's large and in charge. She knows Kung Fu. She's just an amazing... Uh, the screen could not hold this much feminine pultritude. Uh, she, she and a couple other ladies are a girl gang. They are no, you know, take no prisoners, kidnap a couple of, a couple of losers... I don't know. There's stuff that happens. Who cares? It's just so well made. He was a brilliant editor. His stuff is so well edited. I, I would defy anyone who wants to learn about editing. Just get yourself a Russ Meyer movie, turn off the sound, and just watch it. And watch how he tells a story. It's To me, it's, it's sort of like you know looking at an old comic book by Steve Ditko or uh, Jack Kirby and their art style is no longer in vogue anymore, and most people would just, you know, not even give it two thoughts. But they knew how to tell a story. Maybe it wasn't brilliantly illustrated. Maybe everything wasn't pretty and you can hang it on your wall. But you could take all the word balloons away and still know what's happening. And that's something you really can't do with very many comics these days, not with the storytelling talents out there. Faster Pussycat Kill Kill is just amazing stuff. It's um, it's not as rough as some of his later things. He resisted going hardcore, but he took it right to the limit. Um, and you know the business was changing. He but he never actually embraced doing hardcore. Well, I admire him for that. He was a he was a misogynist piece of garbage. But you know you got to admire what the guy was able to do, and just utterly amazing movies that look like nothing else. And unlike a lot of the filmmakers I like, like Ray Dennis Steckler and Ed Wood and these others who were able to put their personal imprint on these low-budget films, his films are actually technically really well-made. Really well-made. Better than a lot of the Hollywood stuff coming out at the time. But this is the one you can pretty much show your grandma. I would not recommend doing that with pretty much any other Russ Meyer movie, but this one you can. So it's on Plex. And I send this over to someone who would have been right at home in a Russ Meyer movie, Renee. <laughs> I was not expecting my own name to come up. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Well. Yeah. Um, I got to go watch some Russ Meyer movies. I'm scared. <laughs> oh. So my first recommendation is about a group of friends. A group of friends with some very special interests and very special talents. And they put those uh, interests and talents to work in a, in an interesting way. And that they create these scenarios for people. Cause sometimes, you know, sometimes you just have to create a scenario to maybe, to maybe scare someone straight, you know, things like that. And this show is called Los Spookies. And it is available on HBO max and direct TV. It's, Created by Julio Torres and Fred Armisen. And it is quite very entertaining. So it covers this group of friends and the jobs that they take and what they do. You know, those kind of like stories every episode. But intertwined are all their personal stories and things happening. And it's just very 
silly and irreverent and just very funny. And yeah, so I recommend it. It's called Los Espookies and it's on HBO Max. Hmm. Speaking of Los Espookies, <laughs> this is the fall. <laughs> I, I, am, I, I came within a hair's breadth of recommending that today. Actually, so, ah! so yeah, I, so needless to say, I, I, I second that. Um, yeah, great show. I love it. Um, so my, my theme today is kind of weird 70s movies, which, uh, hell, a lot there were a lot of weird 70s movies. But this first movie is going to make you squirm because it is, uh, uh, Bill, what is it? Squirm, squirm from 1976 <laughs> showing on Amazon Prime. It is a, uh, what would you call it? An eco horror film where basically earthworms go berserk and come out in the millions and eat people alive. Uh, and it is, they used shit tons of real worms and about half the worms of the film were rubber, but the other half were like a mix of large sandworms from, from Maine, which are, terrifying looking oh, over yeah. three and over three million blood worms apparently they use so many worms in this film that the local fishing industry had trouble getting worms shortly oh thereafter. My gosh. uh it was uh, an early rick baker joint it was one of the first times you used prosthetics uh, absolutely horrifying this move, movie is definitely stomach churning um but it is it is so great it is just it is probably one of the best killer uh earthworm movies you will see uh so oh, definitely in the top um, 10 <laughs> yeah definitely definitely so i highly recommend it it is squirm showing on amazon prime and speaking of things that'll make you squirm i'll pass this to zach Ooh. uh well, don't in know a good or a bad that. way it's up to you yeah um well let's just move on from that uh and <laughs> i'll get into my first recommendation uh, this one actually kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of dovetails with uh, a couple of things I've been recommending recently. Maybe that's just because I've been kind of in the mood for a certain kind of weird humor. Um, this is actually uh, a show uh, by a man that uh, I believe I recommended his his newest show, The Rehearsal, recently. Uh, but we're going to go back in time a little bit to uh, the early 2010s when uh, Nathan Fielder was uh, still making uh, awkward situations, uh, but on his first show, I believe, the name of the show is Nathan For You, and uh, the premise of the show is that uh, Nathan, well, let's just say he wants to help struggling businesses. So every episode, he goes to a business <laughs> and and he makes he makes suggestions on uh, on <laughs> what they can do. Uh, to kind of, uh, you know, help out, uh, uh, help get business and uh, kind of, uh, you know, improve, just improve their, their, their well-being. Um, so some of the things, I, I don't want to give away too much. Uh, there was one episode where uh, he uh, suggests to a clothing store that, uh, because they obviously have a uh, shoplifting problem. And, well, he says, well, you should have a policy where you, you can shoplift you can shoplift one item as long as you're hot. <laughs> the idea being that hot people then go wear the clothes and encourage other people to go uh, to go shop at this place. Um, there's also one where he uh, he has a uh, he goes to a gas station and he suggests doing a rebate. Uh, so they have the gas at one dollar and seventy five cents a gallon, I believe, but that's asterisk with rebate. And in order to get the rebate, you have to uh, climb a climb a mountain. Uh, stay overnight with Nathan Fielder answering riddles, and then uh, the next morning you have to go and find a hidden lockbox that you have to put your uh, your thing in. So, anyways, uh, yeah, it's very it's very stupid. Uh, this actually, you may have actually, if even if you're not familiar with the show, uh, you may be familiar with one of the things they uh, they did, which was to open dumb Starbucks. I don't know if you guys remember. I actually did remember seeing this in the news. I had no idea what it was. What it was, but yeah, they opened a a a, a dumb Starbucks, which is just Starbucks only. It's called Dumb Starbucks, uh, and then obviously they got sued a lot. But um, so yeah, it's a very funny show. Nathan Fielder, I I love him so much just because I don't know his brand of just completely dry comedy. Uh, it's very absurd. It's very silly, but I don't know. It works for me. And I will also say, uh, like watching this show, if you've watched the rehearsal. Uh, you will see the seeds of that show in this one. And if you haven't, maybe actually watch watch Nathan for you and then watch the rehearsal because there's kind of an interesting evolution of, of his comedy and uh, some of the scenarios that he's setting up. So 
Anyways, uh, the show, once again, Nathan, for you, it is, uh, I believe that you can find all four seasons on Hulu, HBO Max, and Paramount+, Plus, uh, according to JustWatch.com. Uh, I'm watching it on HBO Max, so I can guarantee you it's there. Uh, but yeah, check it out. It's weird. Uh, it's uh, very often uh, uncomfortable, but always funny. And uh, speaking of things that are weird, uncomfortable, and funny, uh, I will pass this over to Bill for his next recommendation. Well, thank you. You know, a lot of movies that came out in the 70s were very much influenced by the Vietnam War. And you can sort of see, you know, this, it doesn't have to be a war movie or have anything to do with the war, but you're watching and you're thinking, man, this is a Vietnam movie. Uh, it just, it's got that mark on it. Well, here's a movie that clearly has the mark of a filmmaker who's going through a divorce. <laughs> if you've oh. gone through one of them, you can see it here. And most of us just have to you know, drink heavily and, and be depressed. But if you're David Cronenberg, you get to write a movie and cast, a, you know, cast characters to portray your version of your ex-wife, who's <laughs> cl clinically insane, is being uh, nursed by Oliver Reed. That's going to end well. And as a result, is able to create little homunculi, child-sized demon monsters from um, external wombs from her oh my god it's a cronenberg movie for god's sakes it's 1979's <laughs> the brood and wow this movie you can just feel the, the the psychological torment going through this yeah he was going through a rough divorce with a lot of child custody issues and i don't know if this helped his case any because if i was his wife's <laughs> attorney i would have brought this film to the judge and said look but um, it's got Samantha Egger as the ex-wife and uh, Oliver Reed, who Oliver Reed is like one of, he's so subdued in this film. He's like the least crazy thing in this film. And you're like, when have you ever been able to say that Oliver Reed was the least crazy part of any film whatsoever? But <laughs> that's what you get. It's a great performance. Um does it make a lot of sense? Not really, but but it makes more sense than um, you know some of some of the other body horror movies at the time. Just really creepy, and and it's also one of those films. If you're a film student having to write stupid essays about the meanings of things that the filmmakers never intended, yeah, I feel for you. Been there, but take this one because you could interpret this in a million different ways, and they're all equally valid definitely a really cool film that probably deserves reevaluation and i'm a little shocked it hasn't had a remake although it would be terrible but that hasn't stopped him before and uh like i said this was uh where did i say this was on uh the brood hbo max and i send this off to someone who loves children and would never portray them as horrible little monsters <laughs> renee oh. They really are terrible, horrible little <laughs> monsters. Not just children in general, but the ones that are in the brood. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, not long ago, we covered A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. The entire series. And it was very enjoyable. So I don't know how many of you guys remembered. There was a series on that was called Freddy's Nightmares. And it was sort of like yeah. Tales from the Crypt. Yeah, but it starred Freddy. And it was Robert Englund. A as Freddy, and he kind of opened and closed these little stories, but they were actually really good. <laughs> and I forgot how good they were, but I was watching some the other day on Tubi, and uh, yeah, they were pretty interesting. And they're they're just like scary little tales that involve the residents of Springwood, ever present Springwood of the Nightmare on Elm Street series. So yeah, that's uh, that's my recommendation. It is Freddy's Nightmares, and you can watch it on Tubi. There's only two seasons, but I thought they were pretty good. And they had a lot of actually surprising cameos. Sandal Bergman was in two episodes. There was Mariska Hargitay, Lori, uh, Lori Petty, and Brad Pitt. There you go. Go watch yourself some Freddy's Nightmares. So yeah, that's my recommendation. I'm going to pass this over to Paul. Why, thank you, Renee. Well, my second film has almost nothing in common with my first film, except it was in the 70s, and it's, it's definitely a weird film. Um, it's from 1970. It was this uh, one of the stars. It was his his film premiere. It was film, uh, uh, you know, debut. It's 1970s Hercules in New York, also known as Hercules Goes oh. Bananas. 
And it stars the great Arnold Stang as Pretzi the Pretzel Guy, who befriends Hercules, played by, well, he was credited as Arnold Strong, but we know him as Arnold Schwarzenegger, though he's dubbed in it. So Schwarzenegger plays Hercules, who ends up in New York, and is friended, befriended by Pretzi. And, <laughs> and I, there's not much I can say about this movie. It's not a good movie, but it's certainly fun, especially watching a weird weirdly dubbed Arnold Schwarzenegger so so you know fresh off of Mr. Universeness um especially him up against with with Arnold Stang I think it's a better pairing than him and Danny DeVito even so because I mean it's Arnold Stang come on anything with Arnold Stang gets extra bonus and that's about all I got I recommend it oh where is it playing you ask why it's playing on Roku Voodoo Free Plex and Freevee so that's Hercules in New York, though sometimes I like the other title, which is Hercules Goes Bananas from 1970. <laughs> we all good? Because if not, I've got, I've got a song. Um, doesn't necessarily come from Squirm or Hercules in New York, but it is, is it, Hercules. Is it Chea Chea from Inside Man? <laughs> ah, no. Damn it. I really want to hear you sing that one. <laughs> it's the theme. Bill might be able to do this one with me. It's the theme from the cartoon, The Mighty Hercules. Hercules, hero of song and story. Hercules, winner of ancient glory, fighting for the right. For the weekend of December 5th, Bill recommended Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, available on the Roku channel and Plex, and The Brood, available on HBO Max and the Criterion channel. Paul recommended Squirm, available on Amazon Prime, and Hercules in New York, Available on the Roku channel, Tubi, Hoopla, Plex, Freebie, and Voodoo. I recommended Los Espookies. Available on HBO Max and DirecTV. And Freddy's Nightmares. Available on Tubi. Zachary recommended Nathan For You. Available on, <laughs> available on Hulu, HBO Max, and Paramount+. Plus. For the right, fighting with his might, fighting with the strength of... Oh, oh, whoops, sorry, crap, fuck that up. Yeah. Fighting with his might. With the strength of ten weird lyrics. ordinary men, <laughs> Hercules, people are safe when near him, but Hercules, only the evil fear him. <laughs>